Okay, good evening everyone. It's lovely to be doing a twilight uh, with you all and I hope um, if you are joining us at a later time, because of course we can do this with these lovely um, opportunities to Zoom, uh, welcome to you, anyone joining us later. Um, it, this is certainly one of the benefits, I think, of uh, the new way that we're working. Um, these virtual sessions certainly do bring us together and uh, it allows our community to connect far and wide and as we are here later on, even internationally. Uh, tonight is a really special gathering uh, brought together by our friends uh, from Show and Tell, who you can see who are here. Uh, we are going to hear from young artists, photographers, creative industry leaders, an amazing photographer, <laughs> uh, young artists, and a wonderful uh, artist as well for, on well-being, mental health, and the benefits of engaging in art and design. And if you're joining us live, we welcome you putting, as I said earlier, your reflections and questions in the Q&A, and we will share them with our guests during tonight's panel discussion. Uh, we hope that our conversations this evening will inspire you to bring photography into your curriculum and we are announcing a very exciting competition later on today as well. Uh, we are delighted uh, to welcome here and uh, we have Nicole Elias, little wave, <laughs> Steve Wallington, Adnan Islam, Francis Augusto and you are, they are all involved in show and tell. Um, I am from NSEAD and I'm Deputy General Secretary. Uh, we will also hear from our very special guest, Sarah Graham, uh, who earlier this week, she's not here with us tonight, recorded a conversation with students from East Norfolk Sixth Form College, and hello to those as well. <laughs> uh, they discussed art photography and mental health, and this is, of course, the very much the focus of tonight's uh, evening. So last year, if you were able to join us at the conference last year, you will remember that Scott Schillam <laughs> Uh, spoke at our conference about the experiences that inspired him and Steve to establish the photography movement. Uh, NSAD has been very super proud to uh, work with uh, the photography movement and the show and tell team and it is wonderful to welcome uh, you back to the conference and introduce Steve Wallington, Nicole Elias and Adam Islam First of all, all three have been involved in Show and Tell since its launch in 2020. So Steve, I'm going to say a few words, Hi. Steve, <laughs> has over 20 years experience in the advertising and marketing industry and has received multiple awards for content agency, marketing and advertising campaigns. I must say as a when I was a teacher, you were just the sort of person that I wanted my students to engage with and to have and to speak in the classroom. Uh, you are a highly experienced creative director, uh, a curator as well, uh, working for brands across the globe, including MTV, Levi's, BBC, ITV and Hackett London. Steve has also founded several successful companies such as the vintage t-shirt label brand uh, worn by, Vanishing Point Films, INN London, and his most recent adventures are the photography movement and show and tell, of course. Nicole. Nicole has worked in development and programming for 25 years. She has held senior positions um, for media companies, including Dazed Media, and with the cultural institutions such as the ICA, which many of you all know well. And she has also worked for the leading curator and photographer Rankin, again, much used in classrooms everywhere. Um, in 2014, Nicole created a programme called Female Firsts for Days, which explored and promoted the role of women in film. Its impact and scope inspired her to build a company dedicated to support the education and mental health of young people all over the world. We are so pleased you did that because that's how we connected. <laughs> Adna? Adnan is an 11-year-old student and one of the judges' favourite from last year's show and tell exhibition with his incredible photo entitled Sorrow. We'll see that later on if you haven't seen it already. As we all hear, show and tell has helped him to connect his feelings and express who he really is. So I am delighted to invite Nicole, Steve and Adnan, first of all, to tell us about the show and tell and the incredible impact it has had. 
So I'm going to hand over to, at first, to Nicole and Steve. Thank you. So again, uh, thank you so much, all of you, Sophie, Diane, for um, allowing us to be part of NCAD. You guys have been such amazing support, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I am going to share my screen. Uh, and I hope it all works, technology. Can you see that? Can you hear me? I can. Good. Right, okay. So I'm actually going to begin by actually the power of photography and, and how photography has inspired me in my life. Um, my father was a, a great inspiration to me, and that's me on the left with my action man. Um, I was, uh, was inspired by my dad. He took that photo there of my sister in Broadstairs. He was given a camera by, um, by his grandfather, and, and that sort of legacy has sort of gone on. Um, my dad actually was in the industry, as in, in, the, in the print industry, and used to process all of his own film, um, and black and white so the smell of dev if anyone remembers was a big part of me during growing up um, and then I went to art college um, and, uh, and I left only with one CSE <laughs> uh, in art uh, and went to art college uh, where I was inspired by my art teacher who really sort of got me into uh, you know creativity and art direction and then um, I'm going to accelerate 10 years to when I was in my 30s, when I first had my daughter, Bella, and was given a camera by my, my Bella's mother's grandfather, who found a, an old camera um, where he lived in Ireland. And that camera became such an inspiration for me. Um, and I started taking pictures of my daughter, Bella, um, and really got back into photography, where, where I was inspired as a kid, and, and obviously through, through college and university, Photography became a big, big part of my life. And then I had a creative agency called Point Blank and um, I had a breakdown in my, my marriage and my mother's uh, again had a breakdown in her marriage. All of the Wallingtons uh, separated. So I went and joined my sister in Australia and decided to take pictures. First of all, I thought it was just about a trip and it ended up being without any people in it, which became really significant. It was about the space that really helped me to sort of process what had happened. And I just think that photography, again, uh, can have such an impact on you when you are, you know, when mental health, mental well-being really gets to you, photography can really channel your energies. And this was a great project for me. And then the following year, I then published a book, self-published a book on Kilimanjaro. And I, because I was so, you know, this was actually on another camera, Contact T2, uh, and I climbed Kilimanjaro, but I had terrible altitude sickness and it, I thought it was going to be about the landscape. So it was actually the people uh, and it was the, 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 the actual uh, guides who helped me. And they were like literally apostles who helped me to the top. And so it became much more about the people in this, in this uh, photography book that I produced. So, you know, the importance of, of things around you and what happens that can really have an effect on the way that you portray and the way that you point the camera and the way that you crop and the way that you think. And then accelerating forward um, 10 years, I sadly, you touched on earlier, Sophie, I lost my um, best friend, um, Dan to, to suicide and with his twin brother we set up the photography movement um, we both went both Scott and I have worked, both worked in obviously in photography um, Scott was a picture editor at the European and we decided to do an exhibition with Getty uh, Getty gave us their gallery um, and we were very very honoured to have some amazing photographers from Rankin to Martin Parr Uli Weber who contributed, but also um, Getty's uh, photographers as well contributed. And we also did a, a competition, that great image on the right-hand side of the guy in front of the fence with missing bits was the winning image that we had. But we, we, we had some amazing entries and it was all around masculinity and male mental health. Um, and it was the stories within this that really resonated and made a difference and an impact um, and we, we, we worked with Calm, the charity, and raised over £20,000 for the charity. So we, we got great feedback from that and inspired us to go and then carry on. 
the photography men. We decided not for it not to be just about men. Um, and um, we worked with various photographers. Charlie Clift is the one in the bottom middle with our face painted and Charlie was instrumental in that campaign. Let's talk. Um, and then I was actually uh, lecturing at um, London College of uh, um, uh, um, London College of Communica Communication in Elephant and Castle. One of my students said to me that she had lost two of her friends to suicide at the age of fourteen, and mm -hmm. I wanted to do something about this with children. And um, she had a neighbour who had a school in Tottenham called LAAT, and we spent four months with that school creating workshops with the amazing Daniel Reagan, whose image is on the right. And we did an exhibition with him as well afterwards. So we taught these children um, tips and tricks. And that's an image from my mapping through uh, through the different processes. And um, that really inspired us and got us moving forward to lockdown. And, I'll, and, I'll, and Nicole will take over. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you, everyone at NSEAD. It's <clears throat> such a it's it's such an honour. Thank you. Um, there are so many different roads which led to show and tell. Um, having worked in the advertising industry, like Steve, um, like a lot of counterparts, we've used imagery in really specific ways, and we know their power. They're to sell, and you can sell anything with a picture. You can construct universes. But I wanted to share with you something which happened, which was very personal and kind of a, a road to Damascus moment for me. We moved to France in 2015 with my family. Had, I have two children. And when my son moved at age five, we thought the transition because he was so young would be easy. It was awful. Um, it was so bad that 18 months later, teachers said they'd never seen a sadder child in the classroom and he'd completely stopped speaking. He stopped speaking at school. He stopped speaking at home. Um, it was a really, really frightening time. Um, and then we went out for a day. It was one of those kind of everyday day trips that we took to a, a broken down old castle. And we were there with a, with a couple of friends and our mom, my son, was by himself as usual. But he asked me for my phone and he took my phone and I saw him scampering away. Um, and when we got home that evening, we sat down or I sat down and I saw there were loads of pictures on the phone and I asked him to sit with me and talk to me about the pictures and he did and it was the first time that he really really spoke to me um it was really a breakthrough moment he spoke and he's not stopped speaking since um and going back to what we're talking about tonight is that so many mental health problems and tragedies are caused because people can't speak the words that express how they're feeling. And I found firsthand that photography is the most extraordinary interface to start even the most difficult conversations. And when someone hasn't spoken, it can be just that moment that you need, that tool, whether it's at home, at school, between friends. Um, Steve, can I do the next slide? So that was um, kind of one of the many things that the workshops that Steve was doing um, with the photography movement, the work of the photography movement. Um, and then there was lockdown and we didn't really see, um, we didn't really see that one coming. But when lockdown did happen, we knew that there would be really serious consequences for children. Um, not having school meant the lack of structure, safety, socialization, um, routine. And all we could hear on the TV was, you know, issues about the economy and you know, supply chains and vaccines. And children seemed to have completely been left out of the whole agenda. And we knew they were, they were at home. And we knew a lot of them were in spaces where no matter how hard the parent or the carer tries, it's, it's a very difficult, it's a very difficult thing to try and, and come to terms with. Um, so we wanted to create um, a plan, a program that could reach kids because they disappeared. We couldn't hear them, we couldn't, we couldn't see them. So we wanted to create something where we could reach kids and give them something interactive. Um, there are proven 
uh, therapeutic benefits of photography and more than anything we wanted to be able to hear them from the, de the depths of lockdown um, and the result is in the following quick film One point four trillion images were taken on our mobiles in twenty twenty. But each time we take a photo, have we ever stopped to think about how we could use photography to support our own mental health? Born during an extraordinary moment in our history, Show and Tell is a new way to support young mental health, a nationwide project that asks every ten to eighteen year old to express how they feel through the wonder of photography. Show and Tell values the vision and voices of teenagers, often for the first time in their lives. Our workshops and feedback sessions help them understand and express their emotions. The exhibition finale, an exciting goal and safe collective space to connect with the world. Workshops by world-class photographers, Rankin, Emma Hardy, Francis Augusto and Daniel Regan share tips and tricks for better photos while supporting young mental health. The free online workshops are easy to follow independently or with teachers, parents or carers. Live feedback sessions and workshops connected students directly with show and tell photographers. Our partner, Cisco, helped deliver extraordinary moments where students felt directly empowered and valued by the expert feedback. How are you feeling? Use the brief for the show and tell exhibition. Think of the words that express how you are feeling and visualize that emotion as a photograph. Their words and images are a truly astonishing representation of how the young are coping with a pandemic. We received a staggering 21,383 submissions to the show and tell exhibition from individuals, schools, and youth centers. It was a nearly impossible task, but with the help of curator, Carrie Scott, 83 images were selected to feature in the online show and tell exhibition. 15 celebrity judges, including model Daisy Lowe, BBC Five Lives Nahal Arthanayaka, Rinse FM's Emerald Rose Lewis, TV presenter Anna Richardson, and advertising guru Trevor Robinson helped us select one photo each to feature in our nationwide billboard campaign. Those 15 lucky children had their photos up in lights in our national out of home campaign that was selected close to their homes along with 83 children having their work in our online exhibition and in various publications. We have triggered a conversation that has only just begun. A huge thank you to everyone who has taken part in the Show and Tell project. Together, we have created a social action project that supports the health and shapes the future for our children. So um, those were the results from year one, and we were deeply, deeply moved um, to hear how the program and our techniques had been used um, in the schools. We heard some of the most incredible stories, um, and we met extraordinary young people like Adnan, who you'll be um, hearing from soon. Um, and I'm proud to say that <clears throat> Armand, my son, who you saw earlier, also entered um, the exhibition. And when I asked him to choose a word, he chose the word, the word dismantled. And nobody was more surprised than me to hear that my 10 year old dyslexic son was going to choose a word like dismantled. And this is how he showed um, that feeling. Um, and it's something that means so much to him. It's one of the most important things that's ever happened in his life. Um, and what we can do now um, with this technique is, um, I can actually ask Armand now, what is your word? And he knows two years later exactly what I'm saying. Um, and he knows how to give me that word. So the potential to use that uh, between friends in classrooms 
no matter where, is absolutely immense. And I have to say thank you to Sophie for having worked with us too on this image. So next slide. Um, so these just really quickly are our values. Um, one of the most important thing is that we believe in photography for life, not likes. Um, we believe we must reassess our visual language, heighten online emotional intelligence and take back the creative freedom to express who we truly are. Most of all, we think that visual literacy should be top of the curriculum. Um, visual Im images are the primary unit for young people. Um, we find parents and teachers panicking about Spanish and Mandarin, but visuals are the most used language in the world. Why is there no training? Um, and as we're about to enter the metaverse and Web3, if we think there were problems in social media, they're only going to be amplified as we enter a completely visual universe. We need to train and equip our young. Um, but we believe that no child must ever be penalised by location, culture, wealth or perceived abilities. All children can do this and it's particularly powerful and levelling for SEN children. We are free and we're online so we can reach into school, home, special units, health settings, secure units. Um, we want to work with children everywhere. We want to be completely accessible so no child or school must ever need special equipment built for complete ease for teachers and for children. Just plug and play, play the workshops. You don't even need to download anything. It's ready to go. And all you need in the classroom or at home is access to the internet and anything that can take a digital image. Um, and we've seen that um, children can transform their lives um, through photography. Um, we've seen relationships built and, and rebuilt. We've seen ambitions transformed. Uh, we work with children to reconnect with core values, um, such as friendship, ambition, uh, empathy, all the things which are really important we need to be reminded of. And this is using tech for good. Um, technology is, is an incredible gift, um, but we have to be mindful of how we use it. And most of all, show and tell is about children being heard. Thank you very much. So Adnan, would you be able to say a few words about your experiences of working with show and tell? Okay, um, I would say personally, all started uh, all the way back in 2020, going into class instead of like maths and English, suddenly photography. Wow, this is a new fun thing. I've done this before. Or that I might be able to do something. So yes, we went through multiple weeks going over lessons. It was really enjoyable and fun. And a lot of my class enjoyed uh, not only taking photos and almost expressing feelings in ways that they couldn't before, but also doing something else fun instead of maths. Yeah. Um, otherwise, uh, going through the competition, it went really well until um, we were placed with another task uh, to take a photo at home. And um, uh, I did do so. I made a photo. Uh, well, sorry. Would you share your image, Adnan? You uh, yes, me? please. Yes, uh, I'll, share your, I'll share your image now. Let me share your image. And there we have it. Yes, so um, that was my image. And really was amazing um so how it came about really was that um I was like in my mind I was like I really want a rose whether it's dying or not I want it in the picture and my grand had already had some roses out and I was like Nana where are the roses and she was like they're in the bin so I went on a full-on mission to retrieve the rose and I was like where can I put it radiator if you think about it metal is literally the absolute opposite of plant and then I realized I almost had it had its head down like another person it's twisted and twined it's not happy it's it's unfamiliar place just how you were almost as if those radiator lines are like bars how you were in lockdown sorrowful and trapped and confused really so yeah that's how it came about and like before I couldn't really say it because feelings aren't really such a big thing nowadays and I really believe that this project is showing kids that 
feelings do matter and it it doesn't have to be cool that you don't have any feelings or anything but show them it's nothing to be ashamed of oh and um yes and amazing stuff happened after that going through i remember steve you came to my school we filmed this little thing i think in the little video before probably saw that uh yeah a couple of my friends are in there i'm gonna tell them about it so yes and uh from that suddenly came into class my teacher was like um and then you're not gonna see this in front of my whole class um do you mind if you can play the yes video yeah. yes i'll play for you now asked to be a judge on the show and tell exhibition which showcases uh, photographs from young people between the ages of 10 and 18 in association with the photography movement now the brief was really simple it was think of the words that best describe how you're feeling at the moment and bring those words to life with a photograph we had over 22,000 submissions which is unbelievable and all of those incredible images were whittled down to 83 and the judges were asked to pick their favorite image and, and the image that resonates uh, the most with them and I picked this so this is entitled sorrow and it is by 11 year old Adnan and this moves me so much, this image. I think it's just astoundingly beautiful. And the idea of a wilting, dying rose just on a lonely shelf, a lonely fridge shelf, just the desolation of this I, I found profound. And even more so the fact that it's come from an 11-year-old child, the emotional intelligence um, of, of Adnan, I, I just found just utterly utterly extraordinary and I think that it sums up how so many of us are feeling during lockdown and it really is such an accomplished beautiful image and for me personally sorrow I just found it um, really really emotional so thank you Adnan Ooh. All right, right, yeah. Um, if I'm being completely honest, that's the secret. Um, keep this to yourselves. Um, in class, when that video was first shown, um, that was like one of the first times I've ever actually cried out of pure shock and happiness. And it's like, I know, like, kids, we will not cry for anything, even if our favorite character dies in the movie, we will not cry. <laughs> but really, it's it's it was just amazing and how it went was it was beautiful anyway going on went through having an amazing time and then i was picked to be a judge and i was honestly blown away i'm like me random person out of nowhere I, I, I thought it'd been done already but there's always more more to look forward to remember that and wow, we I was brought out there in London. We shot like a short film that was amazing. That was so fun. And really, when it came down to this uh, selecting the pictures, I was I was almost conflicted in a way that wow, all these photos are good. It reminded me as if like I I was on that receiving end of that, and I'm like who would get this who would do this how would they feel and it's almost like all of these images are amazing but some of them won't exactly get recognized so uh Kat, do you mind if we show some of the ones because i almost had like, a bit of a process so um first up i would say is by uh dion uh, through the looking glass I really felt that the light on this is almost like you're looking into like a brighter future for yourself. And that can, that really gives a sense of hope into it. And I just found that really beautiful. And I just feel that that should have been recognized as well. It's just, I thought that it would be recognized for its own good now. Um, and then this other one by Hannah, um, 
it's not so black and white. This really resonated with me because it's tackling such a grave issue in, in this world. But something inside of me knew that this one was going to get the recognition it deserves. So I was like, you know what? Let's give another photo a chance. So I finally moved on to um, Controlled Ta-da. by Thomas. <laughs> I, I really feel this one displays how the world really is right now. And as uh, Nicole said, how we're all going into this digital world, we're almost being like pulled at the strings by the government. Everything that we do is somehow influenced by something. And it just bothers you because you always feel that you are your own person, but you're really not. And this is almost getting the truth out there that whatever you do, make sure you do it in your own way. And I, I just found that so... It, it, it just broke through it's and this is really amazing in my opinion and uh i just wanted to say bravo bravo thank you brilliant oh stop sharing thank you <laughs> Well, thank you, Anna. It's almost impossible to follow. I think your words of wisdom um, really struck by your images and your words and the way you've articulated what show and tell can, uh, does and does achieve. And I would put a little disclaimer here because I too have this image that you shared earlier and was fortunate enough to be a judge and had never met Nicole at that point, had had the privilege of meeting uh, Scott Shillam and sharing um, experiences with him, had known, knew nothing of Nicole, I'm afraid at that point. And I somehow chose this image as, as the world. it was very small and actually it brings to the point a lot of things of that have happened um I think with this sh- with show and tell it's about connecting with the world when we were locked out it you've shared this Adnan and you've articulated it as well Nicole and Steve you know we felt disconnected and that is possibly why I found that so uh, the dismantled and that we would come back together but show and tell really connects us to our feelings and you've expressed that so well and it connects us with each other and it connects us with what it is to be a good human or to ride the lows and the highs which you've also just shared as well so thank you so much Um, no problem (laughs) thank you so we're actually going to one yeah, minute, no, which, Steve, we, which we've forgotten, which really we, leads beautifully in to France's, is that Adnan also was in one of our workshops, which was incredible. So he was with John Mannell and, you know, I don't know how, how far we are over time, but just quickly, how was, you know, that was an amazing, you learn photography yes. skills, yeah, street yes. photography skills. Yes, that was amazing, street photography. Okay, Um, I don't know quite if you might quickly. know this, but... <laughs> Uh, you know, remember the cycle guy in the video, yes. the cycle guy? Basically, um, he, that interaction was actually real. We had never yeah. known him before. Me and John were just taking a little break, walking around, and we just saw this guy riding backwards, standing up his bus, I'm like, wow! And I thought I should say hello, and then we're like, character, right below my nose, and... The fact that it was so genuine, we hardly knew each other, but we can just be united and brought together by the power of photography. That is just amazing, honestly. Beautifully said as well. I mean, it really does. It does unite and connect us. uh, Try to keep it snappy. The visual language of photography. Um, I... Um, We're going to actually see uh, somebody else who uses photography now, but also to move on to a... um, Somebody who's not here with us today, but she's certainly with us in spirit and that is Sarah Graham and many of you will know Sarah Graham from her uh, from her photography painting a photorealist paintings and we have a pre-recorded contribution from from her Uh, she talked to um, three young artists young photographers uh, Elle, Dion and Emma who entered show and tell and they are in East Norfolk Sixth Form College And they, I think, had a really important conversation. And we're going to show you that conversation now. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Uh, My name is Sarah Graham, and I am a photorealist artist. And, 
you know, photography is the foundation of my work, but ultimately my work is um, paintings, mostly of toys and sweets. Um, very joyful, very uplifting. I'm very well known for painting Chuppa Chups. And I'm just going to share the screen here now so you can see one of my pieces. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> something that I'm very well known for. As you can see, very joyful, very, you know, positive Positive work is what I'm known for. So, um, yeah. Um, so I've been a practicing artist for 21 years. Um, and I actually started using oil, oil paints when I was eight years old. Um, and I'm 44 now. So, um, <laughs> so it's been quite a long time that I've been, um, that I've been doing it. So um, I, I went to university. I graduated in 2000 with a BA honours in fine art um, and I specialised in painting and that was at De Montfort University in Leicester um, and then on leaving university I uh, moved to Reading and that was where my career really took off as I say I, I set myself up as self-employed and um, got a job in an art gallery and started exhibiting and I started in art fairs uh, and then galleries and it's just grown and grown and grown over the years I've, I've exhibited all over the UK and around the world um, sold paintings all over the world um, and yes and in fact one of my clients is Roger Federer so <laughs> which is my kind of big claim to fame. Um, my career break really came in 2007 when I was signed by a leading fine art publishers called Washington Green. And they then put my work in galleries all over the UK and made limited edition prints of my work. And that was when I kind of became well known. Um, but um, other achievements over the years include in 2015, I was on the GCSE exam paper um, and I've since been studied in schools up and down the country and also all over the world. So, yeah, that's very special to me that I'm having an impact on the next generation of, of creatives. Um, in 2012, I painted, uh, I was commissioned by the British band Kaiser Chiefs to paint an album cover uh, for their, um, it was a singles collection album and it was called Souvenir and it was, I painted a stick of rock um, and that was super exciting because that was a dream of mine right since I was at university to do an album cover. Um, and then earlier this year, another dream came true when I was asked to be a guest judge on the CBBC art show called Britain's Best Young Artists. Um, that was super exciting and I love being a part of it. And um, I was so impressed again by like the work of all the young artists on the show. It was amazing. Um, so, yeah, I've had an interesting and varied career and you know, quite a long career now. Um, but alongside my art, I'm also an advocate for mental health. Um, I actually class myself now as a bipolar survivor um, because I've been stable for three years and officially I'm in remission. And I really want to use my story and my experiences to inspire people, give hope to people, um, spread the positive message that, you know, a mental health diagnosis doesn't have to define you. It doesn't have to be a life sentence. You can, you can be successful. You can really thrive. You know, I've, I've been to some pretty, pretty difficult places. I've been in hospital several times. Um, I mean, it started in 2005 when I was only four years into my career and it really did shape, shape my life. But as I say, I've, I've got the tools now. I've, I've recovered. I, I, you know, I do lots of things. I made lots of positive changes to my life um, to reach this point. And so, yeah. And then as a result of my advocacy work last year, I got asked to be a patron for the mental creative mental health charity Poets In, um, who 
do well-being workshops. They they run programs that they implement in businesses and in schools and really educate people about mental health and really try and break down the stigma, which is something I'm trying to do, you know, so that people do feel they can reach out for help, you know. One of the things I say a lot is if you broke your leg, you wouldn't feel ashamed. And I think the same needs to apply to mental health. You know, if you're struggling mentally, you just you shouldn't feel ashamed, you know. And um, so, yeah, so that's that's my story and how I've come to be an artist still after all these years. <laughs> and um, Yeah, so if you'd like to introduce yourselves. My name's Elle. Um, the title of my photo was Joy and all three of us come from East North of Six One College. Hi, I'm Dion. Uh, the name of my piece was Through the Living Glass. Hi, my name is Emma. The photo I entered was Always Watching. Okay, I don't know if you, so it's East Norfolk Sixth Form College, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it went a bit quiet at that point. Um, so yes, if, and I've seen all your work, it's absolutely brilliant, like such strong messages that you've managed, you know, emotions that you've managed to put across very clearly, very beautifully executed. So yeah, that's fantastic. So got some questions. Um, the first one being, what have you learned about yourself during the how are you feeling campaign for me personally my um the photo that I entered being about joy I think it's really important for me and for everyone in general to just have something that makes you joyful like being happy is a very important part of life and for me my photo was of a very smiley dog and dogs that are like my favorite animal on earth I love them and taking photos as well it's a passion for me that I just love it just makes me so happy and I think that that's a really important thing to have. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and I identify with that completely because that's why I paint what I paint, you know, joyful, happy paintings. Because I think we all need a, a piece of that in our lives, you know? And yeah, and I, I think you've captured it beautifully. It's such an uplifting image. So yeah, well done. This was the first exhibition I've ever entered. And um, it was just an experience entering it going through all the process and like the things I learned from entering it. It was amazing. Yeah. It's, it, and, and your image is so beautiful. It's just like, yeah, like I said, it, it's almost like a painting, the quality you've brought to it. It's, it's lovely. And, um, and Emma? I think for me, I've learned sort of a way to express how I feel through photography. Um, rather than bottling everything up, I've sort of found a way through editing um, to show how I feel about things and it's sort of that release and it's the freedom I get from it. It, it almost becomes like its own language, doesn't it? It's, yeah. it's, and it's a sort of language where, where you can't be right or wrong. It's like it's so personal to you and, yeah, and, I, and I, it's a fantastic way to to put, put across what you're feeling and what you're thinking and in a way that people can really understand it's very immediate it's very immediate response that yeah so um so yeah great and then why is photography such a great way to express your feelings just touched on that but if you want to go a bit further for me and for a lot of other people especially people who enjoy being creative and do art any sort of art, including photography, it's just a complete release. And you have so much creative freedom that it just allows you to do anything. It's on your terms. You can do what you like and you're completely free to just create. And that's like, that's just amazing for me. That's the best type of, the best type of therapy. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You've hit the nail on the head there. It is therapeutic because it is, it's a means of, getting things out you know of you that you're feeling and thinking and in a, a language which is easy for people to understand and relate to so yeah absolutely so Dion yeah, as Elle said there's honestly so many possibilities of what you could do with a photograph and not only the context of the photo when you're taking it also the after part in your editing you can make 
pretty much anything you want in it. Make it as creative as you want. And I think that is just amazing in photography. Yeah, it's it's that it's a whole world, isn't it? Your disposal that you've got access to that you can you know all the elements you know I understand that through my painting but also through like I say the photography is the foundation of my painting so that's where I get all the elements in that I'm I'm hoping to um to you know express myself through so yeah like that it, like I say it's a whole it's a whole language at your disposal and you know and again you've used it perfectly in your in your image so yeah, well done. Thank you. And and Emma, um, I I agree with the others as well. Uh, yeah, like photography, there's basically no limit to what you can and can't do. It's sort of that freedom to create whatever you want and sort of release your feelings through that, which is, I think, for myself, I find it very sort of therapeutic. Yeah, and helpful. It's fantastic. And, you know, with smartphones now, wherever you are, wherever you go, you can, you know, take that snapshot, you know, just there in the moment, can't you? And which is fantastic. You know, I, I when I was younger, I had to lug around my big SLR camera <laughs> and like have film, you know, film and have to have prints made. But now it's it's a much more, you know, it can be more organic and it can happen in the moment, which... I think it's really important. So, yeah, fantastic. And, um, yeah, I'm going to ask, do you think that young people are heard enough and who needs to be listening? What would you say to that? So, personally, no, I don't think young people are heard enough um, about many things, especially mental health. I think um, people don't listen enough that creative arts can help mental health so much. And I think with the, the current situation and what's going on in the world and what has been going on for the last couple of years, mental health has been a prominent issue in all people, but especially young people. And I think just society in general, listening to that more could help yeah. a hell of a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, as I said, that's something I'm very passionate about. Um, and yeah, the last few years have been really tough. Um, especially on young people going through education and having to work from home and maybe not having access to materials or equipment. And um, so, yeah, I think you've had really challenging times. So, um, yeah, I mean, congratulations, you know, again, on, on what you've done within this, you know, competition. So, um, but yeah, I mean, absolutely, we need to break down the stigma with mental health. And I think expression, anything you've, any vehicle you've got to express yourself is so vital, so important, you know, because it can, it, it frees your mind. It allows you to get things out, which you might otherwise bottle up. And that's, you know, what we've got to kind of change, you know, people keeping it hidden and being frightened to express themselves you know it's um that's what's got to change what, what do you think Dion about? so yeah I agree with Elle mental health lately is just not being talked about and I think there's a stigma around it as well it's not something that's supposed to be talked about but um as I said in these recent years like mental health has been taken a hit and I just think more people need society as a whole we need to listen to people that's talking about mental health more yeah definitely I mean that's what I'm so passionate about you know and that's why I speak about out about my experiences with bipolar because um I think it's important that people don't feel ashamed I think that's the really key thing here you know people do feel ashamed to talk if they're struggling mentally and I think yeah. for young people when you're growing and evolving as a person and you're going through a difficult time you don't want to speak out for fear of being judged and yeah I think that's that's definitely got to change and I think society as a, as a whole needs to do something about that so yeah oh thank you and and Emma if you'd like to come forward I agree with the other, uh, the other two. So I don't think young people are heard enough. Um, I think just generally, I think all all of society sort of everyone sort of needs to start listening to each other. Um, yeah. 
because there's like the whole with the um, COVID and all that, it's been difficult for everyone, including young people. Yeah. Um, so sort of, I think, yeah, everyone sort of all together, we all need to start listening to each other and sort of destigmatize sort of mental health. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, because like the arts and, and being creative can help so much. You know, for me personally, my art, it's not an exaggeration to say that it has, has saved my life. You know, it's given me focus. It's given me purpose. It's given me a voice, you know. Um, and for someone with bipolar, that's so important. And um, yeah, and, and I think, you know, my obviously my work is very uplifting but I think the the nature of it it's um it's like an antidote to depression if you like it's um and I think that's over the years with the struggles I've had my work's actually become more and more colorful and more and more expressive in terms of of color and life and vividness so um so yeah I understand it and I think society as a whole needs to understand it you know um for sure. And I, I think that will really help the next generation because um, we need we need creatives as well. You know, um, this is another thing that I'm kind of passionate about. You know, we need you, you girls to go on and pursue creative careers. You know, you're clearly very talented and, you know, you could go on to do wonderful things with, with that talent. So, um, so, yes, I wish you all the very best with that. And... Let's hope that by speaking out and expressing ourselves in this way, we can make a difference. Well, I hope that um, uh, the teachers and the young people are here tonight um, because I want to thank you. That's Elle, Elle Dion and Emma and uh, your teachers. Um, I want to thank Sarah as well, uh, Sarah Graham, who I know will be seeing this film uh, very soon. Uh, that is quite moving to see, uh, to hear that conversation at this time. And I say at this time because they stressed so, and they put it so brilliantly that, you know, after two years, mental health has taken a hit and it sincerely and really has. And Sarah's lived voice, adds the value of um, the way we need to talk about mental health more often. And I know that that show and tell and photography movement too uh, enables that. Uh, and young people aren't heard enough. I mean, it says it all really. And I would say, I, I would love to send this film to um, uh, Nadim Zahari to view it so that he can actually hear what these young people actually have been through and what they say and what they need as well, which is to literally be heard, but to be involved in the arts, to, uh, to have that, that a doorway into something uh, that connects us to um, what, what's happened in the last few years. And it really has happened. Uh, today, even in the news, they were, uh, it's been said that the number of referrals amongst young people, teenagers, um, has, been, has never been bigger. So it's uh, Nadim will give you a camera too to see what the power of photography actually <laughs> feels like. So um, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm now uh, going to um, introduce uh, Francis Augusto, uh, an award winning artist living and working in London, uh, inspired by his upbringing and a sociology degree. Francis's practice candidly chronicles facets of everyday life. It's actually brilliant. I've looked and looked at what you've been doing. It's an amazing portfolio, uh, a wonderful photographer. You approach, um, you invite the viewer into the scene, you create an intimate feeling of familiarity with the people that you um, photograph, the portraits that you make. Uh, your work has um, many themes, themes of interaction, self uh, and joy are very visible. Um, Francis portraiture, reportage and personal work best exemplify this. And I would uh, say that there is more image taking than simply being shot well, this is what your words. Uh, you seek to create a feeling of affinity between the viewer and the photograph. And that in a way is what we've been talking about earlier on. So in addition to your practice, Francis, are you lecture, mentor, you critique work, occasionally delivers workshops and always loves a good meal. 
Now here's here, here to that too. <laughs> so I'm going to hand over now to Francis. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, you'll say a little bit about your show and tell journey too. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sophie. Adnan, you have a, a fan in me now. I think you're awesome, by the way. It was really great hearing you talk about your experiences, and I think, yeah, you've definitely inspired me. So I'm going to try and do my best to be as good as you. Um, so my name is Francis, and this is a picture from a, sh a shoot I did um, in 2020, which was mainly about looking at. Um, so Lou Lemon got in touch, wanted to take some photos of how um, Lou Lemon um, athletes or practitioners of yoga and everything. Um, their experiences of mental health and how they are able to kind of use meditation as a way to keep um, even cue and keep kind of steady, which is a really interesting um, situation because each of the different athlete people that I was speaking with, they just had different ways of being able to meditate and be in an easy mental space. For her, her name is uh, Deneva. Uh, for her, it's yoga. Yoga gets her into that space. For somebody else, um, it was ice bucket baths. So he will go into a big bucket of ice water. We was at his house and he asked me to get in. I was like, nope, no way. We don't do that here. Uh, but it was really interesting, that kind of experience of talking to different people and seeing what practices they have to kind of stay in a really nice mental space. And um, I think for me, that's a really kind of good entry into the uh to the presentation because photography is that thing and there's been different spaces where i've needed photography to be able to meditate or to be able to have some form of well-being in whatever space life is kind of thrown in um so this is what i'll talk about give you a little introduction about me talk about my experience with youth work uh, my feelings on show and tell with that program and the uh, workshop i did with my little brother uh, talk about young people, creativity and well-being, demandum, which is uh, a term used between kind of um, young people in and around London, but also outside of London as well, to talk about their friends, essentially. And then my new project, which is something I'm, there's a few projects I'm working on, but this one I think for me is really important and um, hopefully people kind of understand it as well. Um, throughout the, the, the presentation, there'll be different photos that I either like or just think fit whatever theme it is. Um, that's a list of things that I've said. Now I'm reading and maybe I could have kept it a bit sure. Uh, but since I was born in Angola, came over to England uh, when I was about six via um, Portugal, France, Switzerland. And we left because of the civil war in Angola. Uh, towards the late 90s and then early uh, 2000s. Um, and most of my life kind of growing up when I was a kid really shaped the way I see photography now or how I behave in a sense that I couldn't speak a word of English. So all I could do was just observe. And so as a photographer now, and especially at the beginning, um, I really enjoyed the idea of just people watching and capturing. And so I really got into photography initially as a street photographer and eventually started to do different things. Uh, grew up in South London. Um, mainly was, I was a good kid throughout life, but there was like a period of time where I'd say like I was a mid-level delinquent in the sense that teachers loved me, but teachers was very annoyed by me because I could have always done more. Uh, but which leads me to uh, Mr. Dines, who was my art teacher. And earlier on, um, Sophie mentioned how art classes and PE classes for a lot of boys um, in a school that she works in is, is like the safe space. And for me, Mr. Dines created that safe space in his art class. And I was just thinking about this as I was speaking about, as I was rehearsing this presentation, um, every time he went to the art class, he'd play music in the background. It was always Neo Soul or anything from the Motown. And it was always music that you'd either feel really heavily or you'd be inspired by or be joyful, which serendipitously, as a uh, photographer on campaigns, um, when I'm shooting something, doesn't matter how big or small it is, I love having music in the background. And I didn't even think about that until now when I'm kind of writing this out and I'm realizing. The reason why I, throughout the art classes, I always felt safe, I always felt I could express myself, was because he played the music in the background and he'd walk around. And he's this Irish guy, so he was really scary because he could shout. But 
but in that space, whilst he's teaching, you always felt like he, it didn't matter whether you were terrible at art or you were a genius. He just wanted you to feel like you could express yourself, um, which kind of leads on when I fell in love with youth work because Roger, my youth worker, he essentially inspired me to be able to believe in myself and realize I could do different things. Then I fell in love with photography after university and slowly started taking it more seriously. And now all I really do is just press buttons and talk a lot, which I'm doing right now. And I'm trying to work um, to find a way to kind of transition from looking at photography as a um, as something practical to get paid, then realizing, oh, this is so much more important important to me than just a job and then the next stage is how do I use that as a tool to tell stories and be an artist and use my craft as a kind of catalyst or as a uh, conduit for people's experiences to be told and with that as well is understanding that I'm now in a position where people pay me stupid about money to do something and I think for me it's really important to utilize that role and that position of power to go these are important stories that I think are, I, I need to be told and I want to capture them and tell them um, and so that's a bit about me uh, youth work very quickly I met my youth worker Roger when I was about 13 and uh, I saw youth work and I, and I wrote about this in my dissertation as a bridge for young people who um lack level of kind of social or economic or social capital and they bridge that gap those youth workers become your trusted adult they're there for you all the time they make you feel heard they make you feel that somebody who looks after you because most of the time a lot of young people who go through uh youth centers need that connection um and i was definitely one of them um so it was he had such a profound effect on my life that I went from wanting to be a footballer to wanting to save every other kid that ever lived who didn't have somebody that loved them. I did my work experience at the youth centre, got qualified as a youth worker. And from, a, from about 14 until maybe 19, 20, all I wanted to do was find all different forms of qualifications in youth work, continue developing. But then I realised in the middle of all of this journey, I really love photography and I can still figure out a way to still help people through the art that I create. Um, and it's taken a while now, but now there's, there's a really interesting kind of full circle where I can now inspire young people, be there for young people in a practical way, but also help them with their own kind of well-being and mental health journeys as well, uh, which kind of touches in with uh, show and tell. Um, this was a shoot for Nando's and I was very jealous because I didn't get to eat the food. Um, so show and tell was really was 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 a really interesting experience because I'd met Steve uh, I think in early 2020 um, because I wanted to do a project and I was looking to kind of figure out how do I get funding for it um, and then a year later we was talking about show and tell no same year that yeah 2020 was such a long year that I I thought it was a whole year past yeah, yeah, yeah it's the same year later on that year he got in touch about show and tell. And for me, it was more than anything else, it was a really good opportunity for, for me to get in touch uh, and kind of connect with my little brother for him to understand who I am as a photographer outside of being the annoying older brother who always hugs him way too much and has too much expectation. Um, and then it was really interesting in that, in the filming, the questions he'd ask and just how, just how intelligent he is. Because I really knew practically through school, he's he's got a really good head and shoulders. But the kind of intuitive that intuitiveness that he had uh, was really interesting. And within that, what I really wanted to achieve from that uh, from the workshop is to showcase that it doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter what tools you have, it doesn't matter um, what equip, equipment, what camera you have, you can still take a photo that makes somebody feel something. Um, and it was, for me, it was just showing about what are the simple, practical advice that just changes maybe a picture in a little way, whether that means you're using somebody's white sheet to bounce the light off it instead of having a big poly board. 
Um, and it, and like I said at the bottom of this list is like a 360 moment because I'd never studied photography. I didn't do any courses. It was all self-taught. And it was really interesting that I'm in a position now where I'm telling people, this is how you take a picture. And somebody goes, yeah, I believe you, Francis. Um, and so it was really, really great to be part of it. And I use this picture here um, as an example for me in terms of we shot this in somebody's house with no light, but just the sunlight coming through uh, the window and just adjusting a little a little kind of on the film camera and taking a picture and trusting it. And I think with film photography, the last few years has been really interesting because you trust yourself a bit more and then you just, be, and then once you send it to the, uh, to the, to the lab, you got nothing but just belief that's going to come out. Sometimes it doesn't, and then you just adjust. And I think for me, when I was speaking to some people that got in touch with Show and Tell, it's and a lot of the time my mental health is a is the same thing where I'm not always in a good place. But understanding what is working, what isn't working, talking to people, asking for help when I need it, and slowly making adjustments. And uh, what Sarah said in terms of being able to still live a life that you can create and have happiness in it and taking it one step at a time for me is really, really important. And the way she approaches kind of um, her bipolar is really inspiring. And I think there's, there's so much lessons in that, and especially what the young uh, young women said as well. Uh, so these are the, the picture on the right is what picture my little brother took of me. Um, and then the pictures on the left is Steve's pictures. And the reason I put pick these is because um, my, my little brother always looks bored, uh, but he's he's one of those people who just quiet and watches everything. But he's really he's learning all the time. And the picture on the right um, is is something that I always do with uh, subjects when I'm kind of getting to know them or I want a certain thing out of them. Is just either say something that has happened through conversation or there's a connection there and then as they as they express that emotion whether it's sadness sorrow or happiness and joy or whatever is in between you pitch you take the picture then when they're not ready that way that that photo feels as natural as possible uh which is something that i feel is relatively straightforward and it's really nice that samuel could easily pick that up and take it and understand where he's going to work on it as well, which is really, really interesting. Um, I picked this picture because it was, it was just a really interesting moment of expression. And when it comes to well-being and creativity, there's so much in it about, and it's, and both Steve um, and Adnan said it as well. Um, and I think for me, it's, and Nicole spoke about it as well, it's like, and with uh, Armand, if I'm correct in reminding, um, it's that I idea that you can just create and you can just be. And I think as young people, there's something really interesting, especially when you're younger and feeling the freedom to be who you are and not to be restricted and how as you get older, sometimes that becomes more difficult. And I think with well-being, there's something really important about expression and all of these kind of pictures for me, give that youthful expression of just being yourself and enjoying life. And even when things are not as good as you want it to be, there's still kind of some hope in there. Um, I wanted to quickly, uh, this is me and enjoying sociology when I was at uni. Um, there was, Kathy is a, um, is a writer, art therapist, and she's, she's really prominent in the relationship between art therapy, the brain, trauma, and creativity. And she's and she's done many studies and there's so many more research that's, that's been going out and everyone here has talked about how the relationship between art, uh, creativity, photography, especially as well, and how that uh, helps alleviate stress, uh, in, increase your happiness. And there's so much that I feel as as a as a photographer, as an artist, um, I have a role in whenever I bring in any young person into a shoot. That I have my my responsibility is to make sure they leave either either in a in a place where they feel in, inspired, empowered, or just happy that they they can move on. And I try to kind of realize that it's it's really important to if you're somebody in a position of power to support them as much as possible. And I think with educators, there's there's something really um, special that I think most teachers don't even understand how powerful their words or their experiences have on the young people. To this day, I still use Mr. Dines as, an, as 
as an example for where I am in my creativity in a sense of he was always himself and he always wanted us to be ourselves. And anytime we had difficulties at home or uh, in school, he'd always make time to talk. And I think that's another thing about kind of show and tell is being able to talk about that experience, understanding that this word makes me feel like this and this is how I photograph it with creativity and young people I think is really really important to continue speaking and having this dialogue with the with anyone who is kind of going through anything to be able to support them in it and now as a as a mentor which is very weird to kind of think about me in that position I find I, I take it really seriously that if a, if a young person gets in touch, whether it's on Instagram or via email, I've, I always make time to either go have a chat with them if they want to meet in person, um, because I am here because people made time for me. Um, and I ha- I felt safe to talk to these people. Um, and it's I'm in a space now where I can create these moments for somebody else. And I take that very, very seriously. Um, the Mandem was something that I created a few years ago. Um, and it was more about, so a lot of the chat before was about young people, kids in schools. But then there's there's a really interesting space of adult men not knowing how to talk about their feelings, not having the, um, the literacy, the emotional intelligence to get into that space emotionally. And a few of my friends were also in that space as well, where we could meet up and talk about how great things are or what job we're doing but with the moment you ask them how they are it's always just fine or yeah we're going on or it's okay um but never really delving into it and for me it was also inspired because in 2018 uh, i was in uh amsterdam and i just it was the first time i was just hit with an overwhelming feeling of despair um and the only thing i could do physically was to take pictures of the room and of myself and so when I came back, I really wanted to talk to my, my male friends and get them to feel supported, get them to feel as if we can create the space for ourselves to talk about our feelings. We can talk about all this other stuff that is fun and everything, but also this conversation about what's been going really hard recently, some stuff from our traumas in our, our childhood. Um, and a lot of the mandem is about that. So support the mandem encouraging people to feel comfortable, then gas the man them is, as men, it's really weird. We don't really celebrate each other as much as I think we should. When you're a child, if somebody gets a a golden star, everyone is excited for the golden star. Everyone's giving you a high five, your teacher's excited, but now you might get a promotion and people will tell you well done. And I think it's really important to be able to exercise celebration and joy for other people in there. And then plug the man them, uh, essentially just, being able to give opportunities to different friends. Um, And it's, one of my friends said, um, it's uh, reverse nepotism in a sense that it's, it's it's about people from diverse backgrounds giving each other opportunities and showcasing where you can go. And I think it's really interesting. I think that's for me, I want to do that. And I've stuck, sorry, I've started doing that by, um, ensuring that anytime I have I want a gaffer or an assistant is a is a female non-binary or somebody of color because there's not many of us in the industry and wanting to kind of support as much as possible um and it's and a part of it is me taking the risk of somebody coming in who's a bit younger but this is opportunity that they may not have because a lot of the kind of older, more established photographers only want to work with the people that they've worked with. But for me, it's it's really important to kind of, if you don't have the opportunity and you can't see what's possible, you don't know that you can do that. The only reason I knew I could do photography is because I met a photographer who looked like me and I was like, okay, now I can do this. And the only reason I've been able to really improve is because each step has been somebody that's showed a different uh, experiences or a different uh, way of moving that allowed me to go okay there's more to this and I want to be able to be that person even if it's a very small um, kind of position in their career uh, I'm just thinking about time oh yeah we're on the last slide cool uh, so the new photo series is currently called for you from your brother uh, but I'm really bad with uh, project title so if anybody wants to give me a different one please do um, the project essentially is about a series of photos um, that is is decorative because the main thing is 
uh, thoughts, feelings, musings, advice that I'd give to Samuel, who's becoming, he's going to get into 14 and he's going to go into his adolescence essentially and really develop. Um, and, and it was inspired because when I was going into that age, I didn't really have anybody except from Roger, who was an older man, older male who could give me advice. And I want to be able to create a kind of body of work that can will say, these are the things that I've been through. This is advice I'd give you. Um, and maybe talk to Samuel and see what else, I, what else, what other advice I could give. And it'll be photos that I've taken of him over the years uh, and then seen him grow. And it's, it's, it's really, it's been really interesting because he's now like, he's 13, but he's six foot one. Um, and it's, yeah, Sam, yeah, Steve, once you see him again, it's, it's actually quite scary. Um, but it's, it's just about being able to, because the book is also wanting to send it off for anybody else around the world who may not have an older sibling um, and doesn't, there's so many things in the world that we only learn because somebody else uh, tells us or we experience it. Um, but this is, it's a long way from being done or created. So if anybody knows anyone that can help me with it, that'd be great. Um, I'll help you. <laughs> thank you, mate. Uh, so these are a couple of photos that are in contention to be used. One is of him in the barbershop one of just him by himself. And it's just these different photos are different positions, whether he's playing football or he's at home. Um, and kind of having that intimacy of that relationship that I have with him and kind of trying to create that intimacy with the stories that I tell in the book and the advice that I give as well. And then the hope is that somebody else may look at these and also kind of feel like these advice is helpful to them as well. Um, and then these are just uh, some photos that I've taken. Um, I think for me, there's there's a real importance around um, when it comes to mental health and photography in being able to, when I, when I look at like taking photos of people, um, it's that connection that you feel between your photos and you is really, really important. And the different mental health spaces that we're in it's so difficult to sometimes create, but when I when I see somebody else's photo, when I see my photo, I get, I sometimes cry because I'm like, okay, this is what I can create. I think it's really interesting, especially for young people to be able to feel as if their art or their photography is, is a way for them to tell their stories and tell their lives. And hopefully that helps them ex go through different experiences. Um, and also choosing, to take pictures that showcase a certain emotion. For me, it's, it, it was really interesting. I, I, it wasn't by choice that most of my photos was about joy. It was just because it was the thing that I needed in my life. And then now it's the thing that I create to help to kind of inspire that emotion from other people. And I think the kind of the more time goes, the more I get really refined with that as well. Um, and yeah, that is, that is me. Thank you guys. Very good. Gosh, Francis, um, I hope that this film is shown uh, far and wide. Um, uh, I think that it's um, so, you know, it, the, this is called show and tell. I feel like it's show and talk. To hear this talk tonight will really um, inspire young people that teachers, educators, um, it's uh, the ways in which we can capture words or feelings. And I will say, go on to the show and tell. This is not a plug, this is like, there is so many resources and Francis's um, film about how to do photography, it just has these nuggets of uh, wisdom and expertise actually put across in the way that Francis, you just, you just did then. Uh, it has these nuggets that will help you uh, express and use uh, photography, which actually goes on to a question. And we do have um, a few more minutes left, which is great. And I hope the panel will uh, allow us to share a few of the questions that's come up um, in our Q&A. Uh, so I'm going to, um, would it be okay if I first ask, um, the photography movement. Uh, I've got a question from Dai Minakuchi. 
a, a teacher from South London and she's, uh, she said, I've been researching a lot about the photography movement and impressed with your work and think it's imperative that organisations like you, yours exist. How can schools help in order for students' voices to be continually heard and for them to be healed? And I'll put that one, uh, I know it'll be a quick response, got more questions uh, to um, either Nicole or Steve, whoever feels that they, they can or both. Maybe Nicole first. Um, uh, this is such a natural thing to do and kids just need to be encouraged and even just give them the permission to do that. Um, it's so simple, everything is in place, use what there is in a slightly different way. Um, and it's immediate and the conversations begin and things shift and there's a transformation. It's so easy, everything is there. Look on our website if you need to. Yeah, just be quick, support. I'm sorry. To... Quick, yeah, quick, and to support that, I'll just say, you know, we've got eight workshops out there. Yes. We're looking at creating more, and obviously one of them is France's. We spoke about Adnaz in the other one, which is Street. They're all very diverse, different back. Some of them are more supportive with mental health, some are more practical tips. They're free, they're online, they're very easy to get. And hopefully once you start next year with the, with, the, with the new school year, there'll be feedback sessions as well. So we'll be able to give feedback sessions to the school. So please, yeah. Go and check them Thank out. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And I am going to say that Di said, Adnan, what a wonderful student. You are so passionate about photography. <laughs> and Thank um, you. put your hand up. So would you, again, a little quick. Uh, uh, yeah, but I'll make it quick. Uh, it's just about uh, Francis's presentation. I mean, the, if I'm being honest, it was really surprising how many things I could relate to in there. Okay, um, I'm just going to go rapid fire through these. Uh, just warning. Uh, first up, uh, the thing how you talked about, you were in youth. I, I honestly, I wish I had Zoe like you. I mean, you seem amazing. So, great. Um, what else is there? Oh, yeah. Um, art therapy. Uh, me, myself, I actually went through art therapy in my primary school. They were quite, they were really nice and helped me through it. And it really benefited me because I, I struggled in school a bit with like, my social kids and that. So, yeah, it, it, it really does help. Uh, as well as, you know, the mandem in my school, that's a really big thing. And it, it's a, it, the scale of it is crazy and it's rapidly growing and it's great that it is. And um, finally, um, about your brother, I actually have a really close family friend, you know, who cares? I'm, I call him my brother, right? Even though we're not related, we face a lot of challenges from other people, but we consider us two of us as brothers and I, I always want to be the role model for him. And even funnier, his name is also Samuel. <laughs> so yeah, I just want to get out of there. Yeah, oh. I didn't know one minute. <laughs> and a really, really quick, uh, I wonder if you've got a nugget, um, Francis. How can a school encourage or uh, anyone involved in the photography movement or show and tell, how can we, like, like yourself, how can we, what's the best way of encouraging a student to pick up a camera or pick up their smartphone, not for a selfie, for a um, bit of creative experience? I think there's, 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 there's two things. One thing, which is what show and tell did in, in, in the sense of making it not a competition, but being able to enter into something and potentially win something. Because as kids, there's something really interesting and joyful about if I do this thing and I do it relatively well I can win something but in that journey you learn so much and I think that's what uh, show and tell is so powerful for is yes you can be part of this uh, exhibition and you can win this prize but also being able to go you're going to have to talk about your feelings and then that's the only way you're going to get into it I think that's a really interesting way and for different schools to figure out is there a way for them to go a group of 16 kids uh, if you are able to go home and come back and tell us this story, how would you tell it through photography? And uh, the top five will be able to uh, win something, but also all 16 get shown, right? I still have that idea of being able to be all together. And I think the other side is something that I um, enjoyed and I've kind of been able to learn from is bringing in people into the school. Um, like if, if Rio Ferdinand comes to your school to tells you about football 
or because this year is the um, the women's Euros. Uh, if Lee Williams comes in and goes, I'm a footballer, I play for Arsenal women's team, you should also play football. That is so much more powerful, unfortunately, than if a teacher goes, you should, you should do sports, right? And so being able to understand the power that people with positions who are accessible have and going, can you come in, let's create a workshop around you or a program for a year around you, you being that person that somebody or somebody's kids can be inspired by and then talk, I think that has a lot of weight to it. And also having a practical um, aftermath in the sense that after this competition or this talk, these kids are going to get something out of it afterwards as well goes a long way because then you not only uh, have the media gratification of somebody speaking at your school or you're doing this competition, but that delayed gratification of, oh, it's a year's time. I've also learned this, that I'm in, I'm in this position as well. Okay. Sophie, you're on mute. Sophie, you're on mute. I'm mute. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Francis. You segued right into, um, something that we want to talk about in the last couple of minutes and um that is a little mini competition <laughs> fabulous prizes for two fabulous um cisco uh, packs and could you quickly list is that possible to, to even do it quickly because it's oh. they're so big and then i will tell people how they can enter the competition gosh so we've got a Canon SLR. Now I can't remember the model, but it is an amazing top of the range Canon DSLR. Um, and where there is also going to be some soft boxes, light boxes that are going to be with it, tripod. So a full setup. Francis will vouch for that how good this prize is. So everybody needs to enter. And there are two. And all you need to do, there are three things that you'll need to be or do. One of them is to be uh, put your name on the updates for show and tell. That's all you need to do or be involved already. If you are already, that's brilliant. You need to be a member of NSCAD and write a short statement of why art and photography are important in your department, in your curriculum. And you can see that we put into the chat a link for how you can get more information, but just go on to uh, where you booked. The information will be on our website, www.nsead.org, and go to our courses and conferences, and it's in there. And we have a closing date, and that is the 31st of July, which we want you all to enter. So please enter it. The pack is fantastic, and your score will be so well resourced. And we will do a random picking, okay? Because I'm sure there'll be so many lovely statements of why art and photography are so important. And I do just want to finish, not on what I've said, but we have um, Fiona Richman Oliveira from Mozambique attending. You are a global organization uh, in the chat. And she has said, so this is her words. Thank you to the panel, our educator here. I have really appreciated hearing all your stories, advice and wisdom. It couldn't really be better said. And I hope that the people who aren't here tonight get just as much out of it as, well, I have. I've been thoroughly moved, thoroughly surprised, or you always surprised me. And your stories, uh, Francis, Adnan, Nicole, Steve, thank you so much. And backstage as well to Diane. Thank you very, very, very much for uh, what has been a terrific uh, photography movement and show and tell event. And I can't wait for the next one. So thank you very, very much. It's lovely seeing comments going into the chat. Thank you for attending everybody. And I will say good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.